Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to talk to you guys about building modular buildings inside of the Unity engine. So in order to do this, we're going to be using a asset pack called the Kenny Modular Housing, which you can get in the description. It's a free download. The idea of a modular asset is that it gives it to you in pieces that you can piece together in order to build the larger thing that you want to build. So in this case, we're talking about housing. The different objects you see here, such as the roof, each individual section of the house and the windows and the doors are all actually individual pieces. But in the nature of how the assets are designed, they're able to snap together to create a cohesive looking piece uh, once you add in all the parts. So I could see the style of world building working out pretty well for something like a SimCity type game or a tower defense. So the best way to get good results when you're using the modular components is to use a lot of snapping. So I'll show you guys how to build a few houses here. So first off, to keep everything organized, I would recommend that you have a parent game object. So this can just be an empty. I'm calling it buildings and then all of the buildings are uh, put inside of this category. The parent building game objects themselves are just empty transforms with a position but all of the models are actually stored inside of that. So you can see that when you add in 610 models to one building, it could make your hierarchy look very cluttered if you don't organize it like this. So whenever I want to create a brand new building, I'm going to go to my parent buildings game object. I'm going to right click and I'm going to create empty. So this will have the position of the parent game object, which should be 000. And to get it into place, we want to hold down control so that we can snap to units. So in this case for the asset pack, the models were already set up to have a width and length of one unity unit. So if you're able to work with your assets in that nature, it'll work out really perfectly because you can actually snap to these game units if you look at the 3D grid here. So if I want to position this house we're about to create over here, I can hold down control in order to snap to units. And I'll click on the Z-axis adjuster and just snap this over until I get it into place. So now I have this at negative four and any model I put inside of the game object is going to snap into place nicely in one of these game unit squares. So I can look through the model list that we brought in as an asset and uh, it's better if you look at it in the thumbnail view so that you can actually preview the models. So I'll leave it right about there in the middle and we can just kind of scroll down here and find something that we want to use as a base. So for this one, this block that seems to have a staircase leading up to a door space will work pretty nicely for a ground level. So I'm going to drag this into the new game object. Uh, we can see that the positioning uh, wasn't quite right. I guess it's the bottom right corner that matters, not the top left. So we need to go back to the parent game object. I'm going to hit W to make sure I'm in transform adjust mode. And then I'm going to hold control down as I snap these positions into the proper place. And you can see that although I'm adjusting the parent empty game object, it automatically adjusts the position of all the models that are attached to it as well, which is exactly what we want. So I'll call this one house two for the parent. And we now have this block that's perfectly rested against these other houses, which is again, what we want most likely. So now I have a space for a door here. If we scroll down through this asset pack, we can see that they have door modules as well. So in order to add the door to the house, I'm simply going to drag this model onto the house to game object. I'm going to let go and we can see that it kind of gets into place there. It's not in the right location. So it gets into a place relative to the positioning of the parent game object again. Um, but it's not exactly in place. And we can't just hold control down to snap to units because we need it to be somewhere in between. So what we can do is vertex snapping. To do vertex snapping, you need to press the V key. And whenever you do that, you're going to be selecting a vertex, uh, which will usually in this case be one of the corners of the game object. And while holding V down still, we can snap that vertex to any other vertex. So this makes it very easy to position it at something like corners. In this case where the modular ground floor has a space for the door, we can just position it right in there, snapping to the outer wall of that door frame. And by doing that, we have our door perfectly snapped into position without too much real effort there. So now we can add on more blocks to the top of this house in a similar fashion. 
so I'll grab another block here. Uh, let's do this one that seems to have a really large window and I'll drop that onto house two. So when we put it in, it's positioned at the ground floor, but we actually need it to be up above. So if I drag this up, we can kind of get an idea of what that might look like once we snap it into place. If I undo that with control Z and I try to do unit snapping, you'll notice that these blocks aren't actually one unit tall. So again, what we need to do to get it exactly into place is to do vertex snapping. So wherever we have a corner, there's going to be a vertex here. So I can press V, find the vertex I want to snap, and then left click and drag that to the corner I want to snap it to. So in this case, the corner that's facing us to the corner that's facing us on the bottom block. And we once again have it perfectly snapped into place. So we can keep doing this as long as we want. So I might drag another block here, uh, move it up there just manually, and then vertex snap to the corner to make another block. And then maybe we put a roof on. Once again, I need to vertex snap, but in this case, uh, we want to snap the corner of the base block, not the roof that kind of is going to go off the edge there a little bit. So I'll hold V, find the vertex of the back, and I'll try to position that to the vertex of the back of the base building. Um, so that looks like it's in place there. You can always uh, try again if you need to. So if you move your object a little off, you can keep trying to snap it. So if, for instance, you tried to position the roof like this, you can see that it does snap, but it's off because the roof shouldn't be snapped to the uh, bottom concrete block. So if you ever run into an issue like that, just select your object again, do the vertex snapping trick, and then position that at the corner where it should be. So for this house, we have a couple empty spaces still. So we probably want to put a window here. So I'll try dragging this frame into the house and I'll move it up here kind of into position. But to get it just right, we'll need to do the vertex snapping again. So I'm selecting the outer vertex at the bottom left hand corner, snapping that into place for the house up there. And there we have a window. So if you're working with modular assets, generally the components are going to fit together, but you may come across a situation where you want to do something a little bit strange. So just for example here, I can show you how to scale your objects up so that they can kind of fit into locations uh, more properly. So as long as we have a square-ish shape, we can scale an object that would fit into this thing, which is two blocks high. And I don't think there was any asset that's supposed to be two blocks high. So let's say that for this asset here, we wanted to have a two story high window. We could start by taking one of these window models. So I'll do that. And now I'll move this kind of over into place here. I'll hold V down to do the vertex snapping and snap it into the back like normal. Um, and now we can kind of scale it up. So we can also do vertex snapping when we're scaling, which will make it really easy to scale in one direction rather than uh, scaling both directions simultaneously. So with it snapped into place there, all we need to do is scale it up to the top and over to the right. So I'm going to hold V down and get the bottom left hand uh, vertexes snapped with that scale tool. And now I can drag this up in order to kind of scale it into place. And then same with the Z axis scaling, we can scale that up over there. So we made the Y scale 2.985 by using the scale tool, but I'm going to set that to an even three and I'm going to take the 1.641 and make that a even 1.64. So that should have it roughly where it needs to be. This particular window frame probably was never meant to be used like this, but you can probably get away with it, especially if you're using blockier assets that have hard square edges like this. And uh, by the way, if you want the same asset moved to a different location, but with the same settings, we can simply hit Control D with that uh, window selected to duplicate it in place. Hit W to go back to the Transform Adjust tool and do vertex snapping over to the left hand side where we have a duplicate of that window. So that's one way you can reuse blocky assets in order to create something new. So let's make one more house here. We'll make a corner house. So I'm going to go back up to the buildings menu. I'm going to create empty and I'm going to hold control down to snap it units over. Now, uh, if I'm not wrong, it needs to be in the bottom right hand corner in order for it to appear up here. So I'm going to snap it down one and to the right one. And now if we put something into it, 
Next, I'll rename this corner two. And if we put a block into the game object, it should be in the right place. Uh, so yes, it is. We are going to need to rotate this one because it's a corner object and obviously it's a little weird if it's facing the other building like that. So if you hit E, you can switch into rotation mode. You can hold control down in order to make it rotate in 15 degree increments. So we're going to want that to be 90 degrees here to make it a uh, perfect corner for this block of buildings. And now we can start building up on this corner house. So we'll need to take some of the blocks that are specifically for corner buildings. So this one that has a window should do nicely. Before I snap it into place, I'm going to rotate it so it's facing the right direction. So that's going to be 90 degrees there again. And now we hit W to go to transform edit mode. And I'll use V for vertex snapping in order to snap it right on top of the bottom block. To save some time real quick, we can duplicate it and just move it up. So I'll move this block up and I'll vertex snap it to the one we just duplicated it from. And that really quickly creates a new level. Uh, at this point, we probably want a roof. So let's grab one of these corner roofs and I'll move it up here on top. Okay, we're going to need to rotate it. So E and then hold control down while we're rotating it 90 degrees. Okay, that's looking good so far. And now we just need to snap one of the vertices to where it should be. Okay, I'll do it with the back corner because that seems to be the one that makes the most sense. We don't want to vertex snap the roof again because the roof kind of comes out a little bit. And uh, just like that, we have a decent corner house. So let's finish up by adding in a couple windows here. So let's add this one here. So to get it to fit into these edges, we're going to need to rotate it 45 degrees. So half of a 90. And now we can and now we can snap it into place in transform mode. With the vertex snapping and just pop it right in there. So it's a perfect fit, so no scaling needed, and we can control duplicate it. Vertex snap it down there as well. So we have two windows now. And uh, let's finish up with a door. So we'll add in a standard wooden door. I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees, just like with the windows. And now hit W and then V for vertex snap. Snap it into place. Okay, so it doesn't quite fit the door frame, kind of like before. So like over here, we can just scale this asset up. So I'll hit R to go into scale mode. I'm going to try to select this back corner. So keep holding V down and now we can scale it outwards so that it fits the door. Scale it on the Z axis so that it's wide enough and then scale it on the Y axis until it gets into place there. Okay, so you'll have approximations there. And if you want it to be even more precise, you can probably figure out exactly what scale it needs to be to fit that door. So I'm figuring it should be 1.25 to be a perfect fit of that door frame. And then maybe 1.25 on the Z axis as well. Okay, and then to get at the back corner, I'm going to temporarily select this other base block. I'm going to disable that. And I'm going to grab the back vertex in scale mode. Okay, and still holding V down, I'm going to make that too flat even. Just make sure that when it's scaling, that it's not scaling in both directions. Uh, so that it doesn't accidentally go into the walls instead of going out like what you want. Okay, and I'm going to re-enable the model and see how that looks. If you have any decorations that you want to add to the building, uh, you could do that now in this pack. I believe they include a couple air conditioning units, so I'll try to find that and add one to the building. Okay, so here we go, a AC for the side. So I'll drop this onto corner two. I'll hit E to go into rotation mode and rotate it so that it's facing the side I want it to be on. And now we can just go ahead and probably do vertex snapping again. So with this, it doesn't need to be uh, exactly on a corner or anything because this is just a block that we're having as decoration on the building. But I can still vertex snap it so that it initially starts at one of these corners or vertices. And now I can adjust its position so that the AC is wherever I want it to be. So I could just kind of position it there manually. But the important thing is that we snap it to one of the walls before we move it around on the other axis. Okay, so just like that, we've created some modular housing inside of Unity using the Kenny Asset Pack. Of course, with all of these buildings now, we can and probably should create prefabs. So if we create a prefabs folder here, 
we can take these, drag them into the folder, and then we'll have houses ready to go that we can place anywhere inside of our game. So if we want to add in another house here, we can just drag that onto the scene. And while holding control down, we can snap the house to whatever space we might want it to be in. Um, so if we create enough of these base modular houses, we'd be able to pretty much create an entire city with it. So one thing you might want to do for the prefabs is change their base position to be 0, 0. So I'm going to take all of the transforms and I'm going to make those objects have a base position of 0. So that whenever we drop them onto the scene, uh, such as on the building object, it's by default going to end up at 0, 0. So that'll make it really easy to know where it's going to be and where we want to manipulate it to. Uh, here, I'll rotate the entire house 90 degrees and make that the corner over here. So I'm going to add in a couple more instances of the buildings. And then we'll pretty much call it done here. So to make things a little bit more interesting, maybe I'll rotate this copy of that building. So that we can create a corner on this city street. So that's the idea of how you can build up objects in your game world using modular assets inside of Unity. So I hope that this tutorial helps you guys out in understanding modular building and snapping within Unity. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.